I'm Knight Mozilla Open News Fellow, and I work at Ushahidi and Internews Kenya. I'm going to be talking about teleportation as soon as my slide starts. Right, so uh, my title is Mapping 101, Mapping 127.0.001. Um, how to teleport and find home. And it's kind of about Mapping 101 because I work on open source crisis maps, but it's also a little bit about transporting yourself in other ways other than maps. So when we think of teleportation, we think about science fiction, right? We think of Star Trek, we think of Nightcrawler and X-Men, right? But teleportation has a close relationship to transportation, right? It's just breaking things into bits or qubits, transporting them across a landscape and recomposing them. A new space. And I was thinking about this a lot because I was toggling between New York and Nairobi and thinking about what home meant in those places and how the topography changes, but also the telenetworking capabilities change and how that affects my conception of what home is in those different places. So here's traffic, right? Traffic is a way of transporting yourself. And maybe in Nairobi, there's a 20% prob probability of lions. And in Times Square, there's a 10% probability of lions. So the difference isn't that much. Traffic sucks everywhere. Traffic sucks everywhere. But think about network traffic, right? The download speeds, the availability of apps at those speeds. Think about what your experience is on the internet and how different it is in places where the internet is slower, right? What is your home like in places where the internet it download speed is like that? And these are two needle points in my home. I have there's no place like local host, and I have a Kanye West tweet about Persian rugs and cherub imagery. And what this says to me is that I define home according to the internet, right? My, my loving memorials in my home are about the internet and memes. And teleportation itself kind of has you know, similar root words to telecommunications and transportation. So it makes sense that that kind of network activity, that connectivity between point A and point B, the relationship is established in those you know, similar root words. So there's three ways to teleport, right? You can do it the scientific way with the qubits and the decomposing like the Netherlandish scientists. Or you can do it the um, geographic way by transporting yourself across space. Or you can do it the technological way like Globe Genie, where you can kind of um, search for something and go via Google Maps to that new place. And if you take like a Feynman path integral theorem that's like been reduced significantly, you can see that it's usually about time, it's about space, it's about place, which is what we think about when we think about maps, right? We're breaking, um, we're flattening things to a 2D, and um, right, so <laughs> collapsing time. Um, the first type of map you're going to see here is shows internet speeds, and you don't really need to know what it means, despite the red presentation you saw before. Red in this case is bad, right? So Africa not doing so well, not doing so hot in terms of internet speeds. Um, what about in terms of disconnection, your disconnection likelihood, also bad, bad Africa, it's not very, not doing very well. Um, but we also, what I want you to notice is that we still break this down according to political boundaries that we establish in regular map making, right? It's not any different, despite the fact that you're talking about the data you're plotting is about connectivity in a different medium. So social media, um, we often, you know, connect ourselves to places based on our ability to contact our friends, based on our ability to network with them. And in some places, those connectivity, you know, channels are throttled by your government or by other things. So in Ushahidi, this is um, how we've dealt with this, right? We developed this product called The Brick that allows you to spin up internet anywhere. It's about the size of a cell phone, and it connects to a bunch of sensors so you can deploy it in the field and collect sensor data about your environment, right? We also uh, do this by private networks. So VPN, I would throw my IP address in different places to access faster internet. But we also develop crowdsourcing services like um, CrowdMap and our Ushahidi platform, which collects data from dumb phones. So you don't have to depend on an internet connectivity to collect data about your space. And we also do it by proxy. Ping is an app that was developed after the Westgate Mall attacks in order to ping your network to see where your family members are. And then CrisisNet also aggregates a lot of social media data into one unified API so you can ping it to find out authoritative information about crises happening all over the world. Um, and what I want you to notice about this is this is an example of a solar map that uh, breaks down all the many worlds possibilities of what could have happened after 1777. You know, it's a frontiered future. It was originally a GIF, but now it's just a static image. So, um, but what I want you to notice about this is that we haven't really changed our mapping of how we fractalize space, how we break it down into frontiers, right? We're still ascribing to political boundaries, to economic, you know, limitations, and we haven't changed it despite the fact that the structure and the architecture of the internet is different. So I started with a Kanye West tweet. I'm going to close with a Kanye West quote. Um, the world as a whole is fugly. The internet is fugly too, but I'm not in the construction business. And if you can ignore the non sequitur of that statement and just look at the reds, right? He's talking about the world and the internet and also deferring the construction of it. But what's interesting about this conference is that you, we are constructors, right? And if you're going to establish those kind of imperialistic boundaries, you need to think about the landscape you're imparting to posterity and what that might mean um, for the future. So um, 
Right, so my name is Aurelia. Um, I work at Ushahidi. Thank you for listening. <laughs>